Hello, and welcome to Dyslexia Devoted, the podcast dedicated to building awareness, understanding, and strategies to help those with dyslexia. I'm your host, Lisa Parnello, dyslexia therapist and founder of Parnello Education Services. This show features information, stories, candid interviews, and experiences with dyslexia at all ages. Join me as we dive into today's episode of Dyslexia Devoted. Did you know people with dyslexia often have additional stress and anxiety? Welcome to episode 13 of Dyslexia Devoted, where we will be focusing on how dyslexia can lead to additional stress and anxiety at any age. We have a lot of new listeners these last couple weeks, so I want to take a moment to mention my online course about how remediation works. While I share a lot of content with you on the podcast, the online course goes into more detail and videos that show you information that really wouldn't translate well to the audio format of this podcast. There's both a low-cost option for short-term access or lifetime access option that gives you videos that you can watch over and over again and refresh your memory. So make sure to check out my online course at parnelloeducation.com forward slash courses. For today's episode about anxiety, I want to start off a little differently with a story. When I work, I always keep a little notepad next to me to jot down reminders for myself for what to include in the next lesson based on what I see during our work together or something I want to tell a parent later but I also use it to write down something a student says that inspires me. I like to remind myself why what I do matters and how it makes such a difference. This week, two different kids inspired me, and I know they like to listen to my podcast, so they might even hear this. The first one is a boy who bounced into my office this week and told me about how he told his whole class that he was leaving school early to get special help for his dyslexia. My schedule's packed, so the only way I can see him is if he leaves school early once a week and his classmates were asking him why he was leaving. It takes such confidence and bravery to share with others that you have dyslexia and that you learn differently, and I was so proud of him to feel confident enough to share his learning difference with his peers. The second one is another little boy who's going into second grade, and as we were working, he suddenly said, this is a really good day for me. Really? Why? I asked him. Because I had a fun time at school today, and now I'm having a really fun time at Lisa's. I keep making you proud of me. Now you may be wondering, what does this have to do with today's episode about anxiety? These stories are about how two students have overcome their anxiety around learning with me. It's because this isn't how these kids felt or acted just a few months ago when I met them. The one who said he was having a really great day is the same one who was a nervous wreck every time I picked up my pencil during his daily progress monitoring. He was so scared that I was going to write down his mistakes that he was terrified to make a mistake, and you could see a physical reaction to the stress and worry over making another mistake while he's learning. Even if I was just picking up the pencil to fidget with it or to write the date as I waited for him to read, he would show physical signs of stress. So let's jump into today's episode to learn a little bit more about dyslexia and anxiety and some strategies that you can do to help. First, we need to think about what are some of the causes of anxiety in dyslexic learners. The first and most obvious one is feeling like a failure. They know that they can't do things that they should be able to do at the age they are now. They know that people the same age as them can read and write and spell much better than they can. There's also peer pressure. And while we wish everybody was nice in the world, it's not always the way it works out. And sometimes kids get picked on if they aren't reading and being able to do as well as their classmates are. And then there's the internal monologue of not understanding why they aren't like their peers and why they aren't able to do the things other people their age can do. And they get really stressed and anxious knowing the differences, because even if they're little, they still notice. Kids are pretty observant little creatures. And if you're older, like middle school or high school, it's even more obvious if you aren't able to complete the work the way your classmates are able to do. And that adds a lot of stress and anxiety. Now going away from the peer pressure, there's also the stress about how much longer it takes to get things done. Even if you can figure out how to read and spell, you may not be very fast at it if you have dyslexia. So if you're in middle school and high school where the workload starts getting higher and higher, and you have to accomplish all of the same work as everybody else, but everything takes you three times longer than everybody else, the homework assignment the teacher thought was going to take 10 minutes might have taken you 40, and you multiply that times four or five different classes that give you homework every day, and that adds up to many hours more homework than classmates of the same age group would be. 
And that can add to a lot of stress and anxiety because they get less sleep, they get less downtime to rest and decompress, and there's a lot that builds up over time. Last, but certainly not least, is the lack of positive reinforcement and motivation to keep going. Kids who make mistakes all the time aren't getting praised about how great they are. It is really challenging when they know they're making mistakes all the time, and so there isn't somebody saying, good job, I'm really proud of you, keep it up, every time they're making a ton of errors. If you want to read a little bit more about stress and anxiety related to dyslexia, there's a great article from IDA that I've linked in the show notes for you. Now let's take a moment to think about what does it look like if a student has anxiety? Because the odds are the kid is not going to tell you, hey, I have anxiety. I'm stressed about my dyslexia. So instead, we need to think about what does it look like when it's happening? Because they may not have the self-awareness to realize that it's happening, or they may not have the vocabulary to describe it. So first off, a lot of times it looks like avoidance, asking to go get a drink of water or going to look for their pencil, getting really distracted by something else and spending a lot of time on other less stressful things. When it comes time to do a reading assignment, they might make an excuse of, oh, I'll just do it tomorrow, and they might put it off for later because they know it's something that they are dreading. Another way that anxiety can present is not feeling well. When you have enough stress and anxiety, it can lead to physical symptoms. So they might be asking to go to the nurse. And in fact, I was in a meeting with parents in a school about how a student when they were younger just always asked to go to the nurse before they discovered they had dyslexia. It can also present as stomach aches or headaches because stress can build up to that anxiety that often the kids will say that they have a stomach ache when really it's a reaction to stress. They may get a headache from the mental overload from the amount of work that it is. Lastly, a student might say that they're bored. A lot of times a kid saying they're bored is really the code word for this is really hard and I don't want to do it. And what's really difficult is every once in a while a kid really is bored and that really is the symptom. But it's hard when sometimes adults believe the student when they say that it's bored when really they're masking how challenging something really is. I actually had a student who was in my class when I was doing remediation at the school who went home and told his parents that the class that we were doing was really boring and it was too easy for him. So they pulled him out of it, even though he really needed it and it really wasn't too easy for him. And he was making a lot of mistakes and really needed the help. But he said he was bored and it was too easy. So they pulled him out and he stopped getting the support that he needed. And the parents believed that my program didn't work when really it just needed to be given a chance and he needed to be able to make the progress that he needed to make And remembering that sometimes kids say things because they're stressed and they want to avoid something that's challenging for them. And we as adults have to make the best decision for them and give it a chance to try something, even if it seems boring at first. Then once they start to realize that it's working and that things are making a difference when they put in the effort and when they try something new that may not be what they're familiar with, they can actually make a lot of really great progress. All right, now that we've talked about anxiety and stress, Now it's time to talk about ways to help reduce anxiety and stress. The first is to empower them. If a student doesn't already know they have dyslexia, tell them. Often a huge weight is lifted off their shoulders when they know it's only because their brain works differently and they just need to do something a different way and everything will be okay. Just by telling them that they're not dumb, telling them that they just need a different way of teaching, that the way that they've been doing things isn't working for them, so we're going to change it up and try something new. If there is a lot of power and understanding in knowing your enemy. There are solutions when you know the problem, and it reduces that stress and anxiety when you know that there's a way to solve the problem. The next strategy is to remind them of the consequences, as in sometimes there aren't any. What happens if you make a mistake? Nothing. I don't get mad at you. I don't care if you make a mistake. All I care is that you try your best and you have a good attitude. And nothing happens if you get that answer wrong. I teach you how to do it, and then we move on. And a lot of times, all they need is that permission to make a mistake, to know that they don't have to be perfect, to know that errors are part of learning. They need to know that errors are part of learning. If you aren't making mistakes, then that means I'm teaching you something you already know and you don't need help with. It's very helpful for students to know that sometimes there are no consequences to their mistakes, especially when it comes to learning. Sometimes it is trial and error. Sometimes you make a few mistakes before you finally get it right, and that's okay. Another really important strategy is to teach students the size of the problem and understanding that some things are small problems and it's no big deal. 
That's actually the strategy I used the most for the little boy who was so stressed every time I picked up my pencil. If he made a mistake, I went, okay, small problem, no big deal. When a student feels like they're failing all the time and not doing good enough, sometimes they need a reminder about just how big a problem really is. Sometimes, by the end of the day, it's such a small problem, nobody would even notice or remember it by the end of the day. And the student might just need a reminder of, yeah, that one's a small one. No, not a big deal. We can move on from it. And letting them know when is a big problem and saying, yeah, you're right. This one is a really big one that is worth being upset over compared to one that, you know, that's a really small problem, but I bet we'll overcome that. And we want to help them to see the difference between the big and the small, because when everything starts feeling overwhelming, everything feels like a big problem. Now, the last strategy is by far the most important which is to praise the good. Kids need to hear specific praise about the amount of hard work and effort that they've put in and that they have pushed through and didn't give up and they kept going. Notice the praise I said was not about getting the right answer. It was about the resiliency. It was about being okay with making a mistake and moving on from it. So you can praise the good answers and say, wow, I'm really proud of you. You got every word on that page right. And praise them for all the good stuff because a lot of times they aren't getting enough praise for the good stuff. But we also need to praise specifically the strategies that they were using that we want them to keep using. If they didn't guess on a word, I will praise them like crazy over, I'm so proud of you of how you pushed through that word and you figured it out. Didn't that work so much better than when you were guessing and you got the answer wrong? And I will point out all of their amazing strategies that they're using that I want them to keep using. So it's not just about getting the right answer and praising that. It's praising about the work that it took them to get to the right answer. All right, it's time to recap today's episode. There are many side effects of dyslexia that can cause stress and anxiety related to performance and what others may think of them. It can take many forms, but rarely involves them saying they feel stressed or anxious. But the flip side is, there are a lot of great strategies that you can use to reduce stress and build up empowerment. Understanding that dyslexia is just a different way of thinking, and you can do it even if it might take you a little bit longer, and you might have to use a different method to get there. And also, reminders about the hard work and effort that get put into it that leads to great outcomes, not just you did it right or you did it wrong, but specifically praising all the good stuff, because there's a lot of good stuff, and we can't forget it. And we can't let students with dyslexia forget it. They need to hear a lot more positive reinforcement when a lot of times they're hearing all about the negative. All right. Thanks for joining me today. I'll see you next week. Don't forget to go check out my online course at parnelloeducation.com forward slash courses. See you next time. Thanks for listening to today's episode of Dyslexia Devoted. Join us for our next episode by subscribing to this podcast as we devote each episode to different aspects of dyslexia. See you next time.